Hi, I'm Merle, and today I'm going to tell you why I make zero waste Tasty videos. Tasty has a huge presence on the internet, so I feel a little responsible for the content that we put out there, and I think we should be cognizant of our impact on the world. We get into habits when it comes to cooking, and we get them everywhere, from our grandmother, our dad, TV, you name it. I wanted to encourage people to think differently about how they cook, maybe get a little crazy and try something new. I think the term zero waste comes with a very high built-in expectation, but think of it more as as close to zero as you can get. Some waste in day-to-day -day life is just unavoidable, but as soon as you start thinking sustainably, it'll spread to other areas of your life, and the people around you will start to catch on too. That's how you can create change. I'm not as concerned with food waste as I am, say, plastic, because it's organic and can naturally decompose when composted. You can get really creative with the ways you use extra parts of vegetables. The stalks of broccoli and cauliflower are jam-packed with nutrients, and the tops of leeks are full of flavor. Challenge yourself, it could be fun, and maybe you'll find a new recipe that you absolutely love. I'm not the only one who's done sustainable content. Ari has been doing wonderful content for years, and I'm sure you all know, Rie has done some really cool zero-waste challenges. I'm like, who doesn't love Rie? Sorry that I'm not Rie. If you cook at home, you probably know that you don't always use every single part of the vegetable. This video is inspired by something I do at home myself. I keep a little bin in my freezer where I collect any food scraps that I produce throughout the week. Every week or two, I have enough scraps so that I can make a fresh batch of vegetable stock. If you're not buying your own vegetable stock, you're saving money, you're cutting back on overpackaged goods, and you can control the flavor. One of the number one comments I saw in this video was people saying to make sure you wash your vegetables so it's not like a trash soup when you make the vegetable stock. Like, yes, definitely wash your vegetables. Even if you're not making vegetable stock, you should wash any fresh produce that you get. And once you have your veggie stock, make sure to compost your scraps to be 100% waste free. My brother Nathan is the one who told me that this was even possible in the first place, so I owe this success to him. Thanks, Nate. After that video proved to be a success, I was like, okay, so there's an audience here. How can I take food scraps and make them work for people even more? Let's regrow some vegetables. This video is another good example of encouraging people to use their food scraps instead of throwing them away. And similar to the veggie stock video, you actually get free food from doing this. One of the top comments I noticed was that people were saying they wish they had more room in their home or their apartments or that they had a yard so that they could actually regrow their own food. Of course, most of us can't grow all of our food at home, but you can grow some of it. The whole point of this video is that you don't need a yard. If you have one window with just a little bit of light, you can probably grow most of these things in this video. The food we eat travels from all over the country and in some cases all over the world to get to us. How nice would it be if you had just a few things growing in your very own kitchen? A lot of people tell me they kill every plant they own. And you know what? I've killed plants too. It happens. It's part of the process. Some of them are gonna bite the dust. But in the end, it's so worth it. Scallions grow like weeds. Seriously, if you just clip off the bottoms and put them in a little bit of water, those babies will be sprouting in no time. If you try to grow scallions and nothing happens, you should move out of your apartment because it's probably haunted. Learning about how much food waste we produce was making me feel a little bit hopeless and I hate that. So I was like, this is what I'm gonna do. Show people 10 easy ways to help the environment in day-to-day -day life. Plastic is a huge part of this. Plastic bags, plastic bottles, plastic wrap, utensils, straws, it's everywhere. Only around 9% of plastics are recycled. So if you're thinking it's fine to buy overly packaged goods because you're gonna recycle it, you're better off just not using the plastic at all. Luckily, there are plenty of reusable alternatives to all of those things. Pick the ugly produce. Just do it. It tastes the same. Other people are a lot less likely to pick it and then it's gonna go to waste. Utilize your freezer. If you have fresh produce that you think is just about to go bad, toss it in the freezer, you'll give it a much longer shelf life. Another really easy way to make your produce last longer is to store it correctly. Tomatoes and peppers are two things that I am always pulling out of my friends' refrigerators. Make sure you look up what things should go in the refrigerator and what things don't need to go in the refrigerator. 
This will improve both the shelf life and the taste of your produce. I recognize that going zero waste or even just reducing waste is a privilege in itself. It's not something that's available for everyone. And unfortunately, overly packaged and overly processed foods tend to be the cheaper options. Getting fresh produce can get expensive. So all you can do is the best you can do. Finally, I think it's time we start to talk about composting. Okay, composting may not be the sexiest thing in the world, but bear with me. It's very, very simple. I'm gonna break it down for you. The composting effect happens when you mix nitrogen-rich waste with carbon-rich waste. Basically, green stuff and brown stuff. After a few months, the compost will break down into really nutrient-rich soil that you can use in your houseplants, in your garden, or give away to friends and neighbors. The compost bin that I use at home is a small countertop one, and it has a carbon filter in the lid so you can't smell anything. If you don't feel like having a compost bin on your counter, you can always just freeze your food scraps and drop them off at the nearest compost receptacle. Over time, landfills create anaerobic environments for breaking down matter. These oxygen-less environments break down organic matter using methane-producing bacteria. That methane is then released into our environment, contributing to global warming. So when you compost at home, or when you drop your food scraps off at a composting facility, you're ensuring that your personal waste doesn't contribute to greenhouse gases and instead can be recycled back into the earth. I understand how overwhelming it can feel when you think about the state of our environment. Composting is a really easy way to do your part. See if you can bring the practice of composting to your work or your school or your home. That little change will make a big difference and it's an easy way to become more waste free and environmentally friendly in your day to day life. I genuinely believe that most people are good and that they want to do good. But you can't expect people to turn their lives upside down just because you say they should, or I say they should. A more constructive way to get your point across is to state the problem, offer easy and approachable solutions, and make it clear what people have to gain from doing it. If you do that and you don't give up, you can absolutely make a change. Make sure you subscribe to Goodful for more sustainable tips and recipes and ways to try to save this planet.